and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Satin. I really appreciate when I hear from you about the difference that the podcast is making in your life. And I wanted to tell you something, that I appreciate the difference that you are making in the world, because you are making a difference. I mean, it does take a lot of work to put this podcast together and do the research required and hopefully make each episode not only interesting and fun for you, but to also give you something that you can take action with, that you can take back to your relationship, to talk to your friends about. And the reason that I want to appreciate you right now for making a difference is that I've been able to watch the podcast grow week after week, month after month for the past year and a half. Every month, the audience for the podcast has gotten bigger and bigger. And I have to tell you that I haven't done anything to make that happen other than produce a podcast. I mean, sure, I post about the podcast on Facebook, but what really makes the difference is whatever it is that you are doing. So maybe you're telling your friends about the podcast and about how much you're learning about how to do relationships well, or maybe it's coming out in your relationship. All I know is that word is getting out and more and more people are listening and more and more people are taking action. Funny things happen, like someone sends me an email saying they went out on a blind date and sat down to uh, to talk to the person across the table, and it turns out that person also listens to the podcast. And that kind of thing is happening all the time. So I want to let you know that you are making a difference and you are in good company, and that company is growing larger and larger. And together we are all going to change the way that relationship is done in this world. It starts with us. It starts with really taking in all of this information and using the things that that make sense and seeing how it impacts you and it impacts your beloved and finding those things that really work magic and passing them on. And letting people know that the podcast is here as a resource for them is great, too, because it ensures that everyone is starting to speak the same language. We're all starting to come to understand this new technology of how do we how we even do relationship with each other in a different way? How do we show up more fully? How do we show up as ourselves How do we uh, come back into regulation when we're triggered? How do we know how to communicate better? All of that stuff. So, I mean, I don't have to tell you this because you're listening to the podcast and you know all the things that we cover here. Um, So I just wanted to tell you that I really appreciate you. And I'm trying to come up with ways that, you know, whether it's meetups in various towns, I'm not really quite, I'm not sure yet. But I want to let you know that you're not alone. And if you feel like you're listening alone, you should know that you're not. There are thousands upon thousands of people. And again, that tribe is growing every single week. Um, And it's exciting. It's exciting because more than anything, I want everyone to experience love and happiness and when it's painful I want them to feel like it's worth it like there's something on the other side of that that's new growth new awareness new levels of connection all of that so thank you and uh, I guess this is also a not so subtle hint to uh, keep doing whatever it is you're doing keep getting the word out keep letting people know about this resource at this point there are over 80 episodes of the podcast And I've tried to make every single one of them something powerful. So if you just started listening, I encourage you to go back, find interesting looking episodes or even just pick something at random and see what's there for you. My goal all along has been that not only will each new episode be useful, but that everything there will just be this evergreen resource 
for everyone who comes on board to learn about how to do relationship better and better. So thank you. Next, I also wanted to offer just a quick little reminder. I wrote this guide. It has three strategic, amazing, easy things you can do to improve the communication in your relationship. And it it also helps with all the communication in your life, but particularly in your relationship. And these are not the typical kinds of things that you hear about when people talk about improving communication, their relationship communication skills. I took my top three, put them together in a guide. If you want to experience what that's like so that even if you're talking about something really, really challenging, it connects you with your partner. And of course, if you're talking about something really exceptional it make gives you an even deeper connection with your partner then just download the guide you can go to neilsatin.com slash relate or you can text the word relate to the number 33444 and follow the instructions and i will send you a link to the guide and that's relate spelled r-e-l-a-t-e So how about today? What are we going to talk about today? Last week, you got to hear from Andrew Harvey, and we were talking about the role of your connection to something greater than you and how that can fuel you in relationship. Next week, we're going to be talking with John Gray, the author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And uh, he just came out with a new version of that called Beyond Mars and Venus. That's really great. And so we had a fascinating conversation that I'm excited for you to hear next week. Today, I wanted to talk about the value of space. When we think about relationship, we're thinking about two of us, or maybe more if you're in a polyamorous kind of situation. But let's just say we're talking about more than one person relating, one person relating with another person. And also there's that inner relationship. So there's how you relate to yourself. And at this point, you've heard time and again on the podcast that we want to show up more and more fully so that you can be that exceptional, amazing you that you're meant to be in this world and bring that to your relationship, to your connection and and shine more brightly and encourage your partner to shine more brightly. And you can really create some amazing things together. So that's really important, showing up fully. But how do you show up fully when you're in relationship with another person? There can be this temptation because there's so much magic in relating that you should spend all your time together. Or if you don't see each other during the day because one or both of you is working after work well that's you should be together during that time and it becomes really easy to feed especially when you have all of this new information about what to do in relationship with your partner it's like well i want to put that into practice i want to i want to feed it i want to change the things that aren't working i want to grow the things that are all of that but in order to bring your full self to relationship you need to find ways to fill yourself. If you're going to show up fully, if you're going to be full when you show up, then at some point you have to fill. And there are certainly aspects of relationship that are filling and reciprocal in that way, where if you're in that that cycle with your partner, where you're really feeding each other and feeding off each other, and I don't mean in a parasitic kind of way, I mean in that like where you're where you energize each other and where you find ways to appreciate each other. Well, that does create energy and help fill you up for sure. And there are aspects of relationship that are demanding, that are creative, that, that take energy. And in order to have energy to give, you need to nourish yourself. Now, this could be something simple like, making sure you eat well and making sure you get enough rest so that you are nourished and can show up more fully. 
And there's another part to it, too. It's giving yourself the space that you need to remind yourself who you are, who you are when you're not related to your partner or related to any other person. How do you exist totally on your own? And, you know, we were touching on this a little bit last week um, with Andrew Harvey, because when you're alone, well, that does open you up to ways of relating to yourself, to, um, to your spirit, if you're spiritually inclined, and I certainly am. Um, so it, it creates an opportunity for that. But the space also allows you to rest, to meander, to do things like pick up that guitar and play a song you haven't played in a year or five years or 10 years, to read a book, to take a hot shower and just enjoy the feeling of the water cascading over your skin. Although I do recommend finishing with a nice cold blast. It feels really great. The only way that you can get to know yourself better outside the context of relationship is by giving yourself the space to know yourself and giving yourself vehicles for knowing yourself. So that could be through doing something, through trying something new, uh, a new hobby, a new skill, a new interest, a new passion, those things for sure. And it also comes through creating inner space, inner quiet. And this is something that came up in my episode with Kyle Cease, uh, which as I'm talking, I'll pull up the episode number. This notion that there's value in actually nothing, creating nothing, like just creating the opportunity for yourself to simply listen without an agenda, to be in that amorphous kind of limbo zone, you could be really surprised at what pops out in those moments. And it's one of those things where you really, if you don't do it, you're going to have to take my word for it, but don't take my word for it. Give yourself that opportunity. It's no accident that some of the most successful people in our worlds uh, take time every day to meditate to practice mindfulness. Um, and you could do that. Like mindfulness is great, but if it becomes something where you are now suddenly obsessed about doing that one thing and like meditating perfectly and, you know, oh shit, like now I'm thinking about things and I have to get rid of my thoughts and like all of that, then forget it. Like definitely don't do that. Instead, I want you to just allow yourself some nothingness, just daydreaming, just seeing what happens or, um, you know, taking some coconut oil and rubbing it into the soles of your feet just to give yourself that physical nurturance. Um, I mean, there are other ways you can nurture yourself physically, but I even think those things that, that aren't sexual, but that are simply sensual and, and reminding yourself, oh, I have a body and it's okay. And it, it deserves simply being tended to all these things are only possible if you create space for yourself to do them and then the space to let it register however it's going to register it could be some brilliant like aha realization or it could be just a sense that you develop over time or a real subtle awareness of how the environment around you is impacting you and how much your system needs uh, some relaxation, needs some space to come back into calibration. You know, we live in this world that's so um, full of sensory input that that in itself becomes an addiction. I was talking a few weeks ago about distraction and how challenging that is. We're like distracting ourselves all the time. Um, and when you, when you quiet the noise um, and give yourself that space and allow yourself to feel joy, to feel curiosity, to feel nothing, whole new worlds open up. And in the process, 
your cup, as they say, gets full. And you fill the cup and then you can bring that with you into the world so that you're showing up even more fully with the new discoveries that you've made or the new curiosities that you have. There's so much available in the world within you that as you get curious about the world within you, it reveals how many more ways you can be curious about the world outside of you and particularly the world of your partner. Especially after year after year, hoping that you're fortunate enough to be in a long-term relationship because there's so much growth there available and so much uh, power in the depths of intimacy, the good depths, the, that deep, deep, deep knowing of each other. And at the same time, there's a whole world within your partner, just like there's one within you. Again, don't take my word for it. Give yourself the space and the opportunity to discover that. Now, one important thing that I want to say before I wrap things up for today. So yes, taking space. Awesome. Taking space can feel really triggering to your partner. I mean, it can be hard for you to take space. So if you feel all these resistances coming up within you, like, oh, I can't do that. I don't have enough time. You know, I'm, what would I find out? I'd have to face that, the pain of whatever that happened years ago, all of that stuff. I mean, that's really useful information, your, your own resistances to space. But it can also be quite triggering for your partner if you're like yeah i know that we always hang out at night and do xyz but i really need this space so i'm going to suggest a couple things first is that when you let your partner know that you need some space that you're really upfront and saying this isn't about you i don't need space from you because i have some problem with you i need space for me I think it's also really helpful to let your partner know that the part of the reason for having that space is so you can nourish yourself and nurture yourself so that at least in part you have more to offer the relationship. Maybe you're lucky enough to be in a relationship where you're feeling totally satiated and your partner is as well and that's not a big deal. I know that many of us are in relationships where we're wanting a little bit more, a little bit more from our partner or our partner wants a little bit more from us. And so that can be challenging if your partner is wanting a little more from you and in, in that you're saying, I need some space, then they're going to be like, whoa, wait a minute, I want more. So if you can be really clear that what you're doing is nourishing yourself so that you're charging your reservoir, so that you're, you have all this energy to show up in the world and to give, and in fact, to tap in to the things that feed your brightness. If your partner can see that and can see that it is not a threat to them and that it doesn't threaten the safety of your relationship, then it's not going to cause a problem. Because getting triggered happens because we don't get triggered just because we're annoyed about something. The reason we get triggered is because our safety is actually being threatened. So you can think about, about it that way. Is asking for space, is that going to somehow threaten my partner's feeling of safety with me? And so how can I help them see that this space actually is going to make them more secure, more safe with me? So those are a few helpful hints for how to present your desire for space and oh the last piece of that is that if you're asking for space it can often be helpful to say like something like i need the next hour just for me and after that um i'd like to have some tea together or something you get the sense like it's it's giving your partner a sense of when you're coming back so it's not this indefinite 
sorry, I got to be out of here. But it's a it's a defined period of time. Here's an example. Last night, Chloe and I, we were talking about our wedding plans, which has been a mix of awesome and really stressful. And my brain was just like totally fried. And we were in this intense conversation about a really important part of our ceremony. And finally, I was just like, I just need 15 minutes. And it was really hard because we were locked into the conversation and the groove and trying to work things out. But I was like, you know, my brain is just a muddle right now. And I just need 15 minutes of silence and space to come back and to let this all unwind. And then then we can talk some more. So Chloe, being the kind partner that she was, was like, okay. And she was, I think she was kind of reluctant because she probably sensed I was also really tired and thought maybe I would just fall asleep or something. And so I I was just lying there petting the dog and Chloe came over and we were just being quiet with each other. And in fact, I think I did fall asleep for a couple minutes. She told me afterwards I was twitching, but it didn't, it wasn't like, I was asleep and gone. It was just like kind of dipping into that spacey theta state for just a few minutes. And after 15 minutes, we came back to the conversation and I had so much more energy and we came to some new conclusions and ideas and revelations that hadn't even been there. And we never would have probably gotten there if we had just been trying to hash it out. So that's just a personal example of how that space was so valuable. And that was only 15 minutes and it made a world of difference. So when I say space, I'm not saying like, go, you know, live in a shack for two months, although that sounds nice to some level, even 15 minutes, even five minutes of space can make a world of difference. As long as it's done in that container of, I'm doing this for me and I'm also doing this for us. You wanna maintain your sense of couple consciousness as you also work on yourself and your own growth and your own development and your own uh, passion and thriving in the world. So I said a few moments ago that I would let you know the Kyle Cease episode number so you could hear that. Um, That's episode number 48. And I will warn you in advance that this episode has gotten the most negative feedback of any episode that I've done. It's really funny. And on the flip side, it's gotten some of the most positive feedback. So... I don't know what that's about. I mean, it was it was a pretty intense conversation and I cried at one point and, you know, it was great. There was a there's a well, I'm not going to give you give all the mysteries away, but um, you may love it. You may hate it. It's definitely worth listening to, um, particularly in this context of our own uh, growth and development. That's episode 48. And um, another great self-oriented episode from before is episode number 53, which is all about intimacy and our fear of intimacy. And that was with Ken Page. So, I mean, there are, there are any number of episodes back there. If you haven't listened to the, uh, the best ways to come back into balance when you're triggered episode, which is episode number 47, I also recommend that. That's, that's a pretty important skill if you haven't noticed. Anyway, so those are a few recommendations. Um, In the meantime, take space, enjoy it, and let me know what you find. My email address is neilius, N-E-I-L-I-U-S, at neilsatin.com. You can join the Relationship Alive community on Facebook. Just search for us and click join and I'll approve you because I approve everyone basically except for spammers. They get kicked out really quickly. And uh, and join the conversation there. And um, again, I get a lot of email. I love hearing from you. I read everything. I may not respond to you. I apologize in advance. But I may respond to you via a podcast episode, so you never know. And, um, and finally, again, thank you so much for helping do this work in the world, for showing up this way in your relationship, for letting other people know about what you're learning and about the podcast. And that is truly a ripple effect that is going out into the world and changing the lives, the relationship and the consciousness of our planet. And I think we could all use some help in that respect. So 
We're doing it together. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I will see you next week with John Gray. Until then, take care and nurture yourself, please. <laughs>